Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 2. I hope you're doing fantastic today. In the previous episode, we installed these two huge bamboo farms underneath the surface of the ocean. They are now completely installed and ready to go and able to produce tons and tons of bamboo. But of course, that is not the focus of today's episode. We're actually going to be building a new farm in our farming area of bases. And it's going to be going right in like the middle of the vertical part of the base, if that makes any sense. We are building a huge squid and fish farm. This is going to cast a huge shadow over the top of the guardian farm. But it's also going to give us a tremendous amount of raw fish that we're going to smelt down for experience. And it's also going to give us a lot of ink sacks as well, which we will then be using to craft the dark prismarine and make the base all beautiful. Basically, we're going to be getting like 20,000 fish an hour and a bunch of ink sacks and all kinds of other amazing things, including a lot of bones. Before we can actually start placing down blocks and building the farm, we need to do a little bit more planning and figure out the exact height that the squid farm is going to be going. We already know where it's going to be going, like left and right and forward and backward and all that stuff. The center of the farm is going to be directly right here, which is directly above the AFK spot of the guardian farm and directly below the planned AFK platform for the squid farm. However, what we don't know is the actual height that we want the squid farm to be at. This right here is just a little placeholder platform, so we might need to raise this up a few blocks. We might need to to lower it down we might need to do a couple of different things and that is because the squids and fish in bedrock edition actually have different spawning and despawning ranges as well so fish spawn and despawn much closer to the player than squids do so we can use that to our advantage depending on where we afk with this farm we'll either get like 20,000 fish per hour or just a couple thousand fish per hour due to the fish drops from dolphins Dolphins. So we can basically completely eliminate all of the junk items and junk drops just by AFKing in the correct spot. So we need to do a couple of tests and figure out the ideal location to AFK with this farm. And now we move over to a creative test world, just a random old world in the middle of the ocean. And we have a couple of execute commands, the same kind of commands that we use to find spawn spots and various structures like guardian farms. This is basically executing at a specific mob type that we want. Now this command is targeting squids anywhere in the world, set blocking a block at their location. And that block is wool color number four, which happens to be yellow so we have four of these in total one for cod one for salmon one for dolphins and one for squids we also have a kill command going to kill everything in the area as you can see it's just killing away so what this is going to do is this is going to tell us exactly where everything is spawning and then immediately kill it as you can see those cods spawned in and then immediately got filled with some blocks and then killed and then some squids spawned way over there as well so basically all I need to do is go AFK for a while, see where everything spawns, see what happens, and then we can use that data to figure out the spawning spheres for the two different types of mobs, the fish and then the dolphins and squids, and then we can build the farm at the correct location on the Truly Bedrock server to get the best drops that we can. Around about 30 minutes later now, and we have some very interesting results from this little spawning test if we fly above the water you can see what i mean there is a lot of markers from hundreds and hundreds of things spawning however they're all right at the surface layer of the water barely anything at all goes below six blocks deep and the furthest markers are seven blocks below the surface of the water so basically nothing spawns right here in this middle zone like literally nothing at all which is super fascinating and only the drowns spawn here on the very bottom of the ocean of course so that basically tells me that we only need a maximum of seven layers of water typically i do about four layers of water if you have any less than that then the particles from items in the bubble columns it causes extreme lag so you don't want to have one layer of water in your squid farm but apparently you can have like a maximum of seven to take advantage of the spawning so we have uh, a couple different spheres because i was too lazy to remove these ones 
but basically all the cod and stuff spawns about 29 or so blocks away from the player some of them are a little bit further out maybe like 30 blocks away from the player but once you get about 29 blocks away from the player's afk spot there really isn't any cod or fish at all and all you get is these dolphin and squid markers all the way out to a radius of 44 blocks which makes sense because that is the standard sim for distance now, this might be different on larger simulation distances this is a sim 4 test that we're running right now however as you can see this entire range from about 29 blocks all the way to 44 is purely the squid and dolphin range which is exactly what i wanted and needed to find for our little project in today's video so this test is very successful we're going to build our afk spot about 29 blocks above the surface of the water have seven blocks of water above our magma blocks and that will be our squid farm things have been figured out platforms have been moved and every single thing was off by several blocks so it's very good that we double checked everything with the spawning spheres that we just did in creative so of course the afk spot of the guardian farm is right there and you can see the spawning spheres of that nothing will ever spawn in the squid farm if we're down there afk at the guardian farm which is exactly what we want we had to move the magma blocks up a layer to make sure that nothing ever spawns when afk at the guardian farm we have seven layers of water marked out with those prismarine bricks and then just some additional counting blocks and we had to move the afk spot from there all the way up to there to make sure that we have no fish inside of our squid farm now that does mean that we are really really high above the squid farm which is going to reduce the total number of of spaces that squids can actually spawn so we may actually have to lower our afk spot right here meaning that we're going to get a bunch of fishes inside of our squid farm but that does mean that we can increase the size of the squid farm significantly i'm not entirely sure the best course of action so we'll just kind of start building and see what happens it's going to be a little bit difficult to see but i am trying to figure out the maximum size that we can have the squid farm while still maintaining the afk spot right there at the top so how i'm doing this is i'm having the armor stand up there with the spawning spheres a texture pack and then if you raise your fov to like 90 you can kind of keep that armor stand within your field of view to keep it rendered and that way you can see the spheres because if you look away from it then the spheres unrender which is kind of a flaw with the pack but it's kind of the best that we can do it's still an amazing pack so as you can see if we are standing right here we're going to be outside of the spawning sphere but if we go in by a block we will keep Keep it symmetrical and we will also be completely within the sphere as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this thing be basically 32 by 32 so I marked out the central chunk right here which is all four of those corners and then I went out eight blocks from there and connected that up and if we go stand on this corner you can see that there's a red cube right there which means that we are completely within the despawn sphere so we can have this thing be perfectly symmetrical and lined up with the rest of the base and have it be 32 by 32 and not despawn a single one of our lovely precious squids and this right here is going to be the final size of the squid farm as long as i've counted everything correctly and as long as i've planned everything correctly we shouldn't have a single squid despawn and as you can see it looks like it is perfectly within the edges of the despawn sphere very nice i like this a lot actually this should go along pretty smoothly now this can be a rather complicated build process and i want to do a couple of tests in creative because i know how to build it from like a 1.10 standpoint i think that's the last time i did a tutorial for these however many things have changed with water water spreads water logging and especially bubble columns and the last six major updates so i'm gonna go over to creative for a second and do some testing that way i can figure out the best way to fill this in with seven layers of water okay first question can we do this the easy way and i already know the answer if we just dump water sources across the top that is not going to turn into bubbles
bubble columns because flowing water can't be used for bubble columns anymore. Unfortunately, it was a super convenient way of making bubble columns. So why do we gotta have not nice things anymore? And the second question is if we place water sources all along this bottom row, like so, yes, those will actually flow across and all of these will turn into bubble columns now. So that's a good thing. Second, third, fourth, fifth question. Can we put water sources along like that? Oh, we can. Okay, beautiful. And all these are now water sources. Great. So we can actually fill this thing up with water incredibly easily uh, just by going across the corners like this. And they'll actually all flow across and it turn into bubble columns. Okay, then. Well, this is much easier than expected, actually. And for my final, final question, can we do this the ultra lazy way and simply fill up walls of ice and then simply melt it all? And the answer to that question is, let's, uh, let's make this a little bit faster. I want answers now. It appears that if the, all of the ice melts, it does actually all flow across and it does actually all become bubble columns. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so you just gotta fill up two walls with ice, let those melt, put down some light sources to help them melt maybe, and then you will have a full thing of water. Absolutely fantastic. Ultimately, this thing isn't actually gonna be that big, is it? I kind of imagined it being like 48 by 48, so essentially the same size as the Guardian Farm, but like a little bit smaller. And this thing is maybe like, I don't know, half the size of the Guardian Farm, I guess? Oh god, I can't land up here. I'm just the worst at flying. Something about the momentum always just throws me off. Anyway, I guess it's maybe three quarters the size of the Guardian Farm, so not actually as big as I expected, and that's a fine. You'll notice that it's slightly taller now than the Iron Farms, and it's only going to get even taller as well because not all the glass is installed. This needs another three layers of glass going upwards in order to have seven layers of water on the inside. And of course, I need to install all the magma blocks and I need to install all the rail lines as well. And that's going to take me a little while to get done. So I'm just going to be slowly tolling away at this and placing down a bunch of blocks. I'm thinking I'm going to use the like swim mode to actually place in all of the rails after I place in the uh, the magma blocks in the water. So I'll just swim down through here, place in all those rails. And then we need to figure out minecart unloaders and we need to figure out a bunch of other stuff as well that I haven't quite thought about yet. And with these last few blocks, the entirety of the Magma Block platform is fully installed. Of course, that was pretty easy, especially by spam clicking key, which is ever so convenient for placing a mass amounts of blocks. So now I'm going to go ahead and get myself a bunch of ice. I'm not entirely sure how much I need, but I guess that's the 32 blocks right there. And then to the side is another 32 blocks and then it's time seven. So, seven stacks of ice. That's not actually as much as I thought it would be. So, we'll place in all the ice, all of it will melt, and then the entirety of the box will be completely filled with water, and we can see if this thing actually gets squids. If it doesn't get squid spawns, I'm gonna be very sad and very disappointed. Not gonna lie, I'm very interested to see how this ice tactic works out. So far, I've gotten in the bottom wall, and a lot of it is already melting. As you can see, we got quite a bit of it going around. I installed a layer of sea lanterns around the edge, and I also installed a layer of torches at the top as well, just to help these things melt, because the high light levels causes ice to melt. If it was all dark up here, then it wouldn't really melt that much, and sunlight doesn't really melt it. So we gotta, like, install a whole bunch of lights. And it's gonna be very, very satisfying to watch this entire thing fill itself in. Not gonna lie. Oh, there goes the very first layer. Nice. That is so cool looking. I love seeing that. Awesome. And now we just gotta get another six layers going up. And it seems like most of the ice should have melted. We're waiting on a couple pieces over there and a couple pieces on the other layers. But it's going along very, very smoothly. 
Uh, also, it looks like we need to have that piece right there melt for these last two rows to become sources. But this is going swimmingly. Literally, you can see all the things like dying in the water. This is perfect, exactly what we want. Now there is an issue with this, however, as you can see from the little small blue particles, not the bubbles, the small blue particles are the laggy ones. So we actually have to go around in here and pick up all these items. Because there's only a single layer of water, it is extremely, extremely laggy if you get a bunch of these particles. Like seriously, it'll kill pretty much any device uh, that goes near it if you have a bunch of items in here. So no matter what you do, never build a squid farm with only a single layer of water. You you need like three or four or five layers just to prevent all these bubbles from killing your device. Oh, look at that. We are actually getting a couple of ink sacks. Fantastic. So we do actually get squid spawns up here. That is the best news I've heard all day. And it's only like three o'clock. At this point, maybe like 85% or so of all of the water sources have become water sources. So most of the ice is melted now. We're just waiting on a few key sources to become sources. So if we break that one, for example, Oh, yes, tidal wave. Oh, not quite. Hold on. Hold on. It's, it's not quite ready yet. <laughs> if we do all of these, and yeah, basically, I just need to break a little bit of ice. Tsunami! Fantastic. <laughs> I love this so much. It's so cool to see this happen in real time. Nice. Okay, so this water source right here is holding up the expansion. Nice. And then there's that one and that one. <laughs> this is so cool. I love it so much. It does this just automatically. Whoop. Nice. Okay, now I need to get in the top of four layers of water. The bottom three are done. So I should be able to do that just by running across and breaking all of these. I'm probably not going to be able to catch it on camera, but it'll happen. You can imagine what it looks like. And as long as I can kind of hurry, we might see some of it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I wanted to see right there. Nice. <laughs> This has taken very minimal work to get it all installed. Like normally laying down a bunch of water sources like this would take so much time. And especially the way that I was thinking we would have to do it is we would have to uh, basically remove the magma blocks because magma blocks are weird and bubble columns are weird. But this is so much easier than expected. And bam, the entire thing is now 100% water sources. You can see we got a couple of squids dying over there in the corner. This is the greatest news. We've got squids over there on that edge as well. Great, fantastic, beautiful, lovely, amazing. And now I'm going to do myself a little bit of a test. I know we already got 19 ink sacks from the farm, but I'm going to stand up here for a while and see exactly what spawns. Hopefully we only get dolphins, which we do, and that means that we're going to get squids as well. Dolphins and squids basically share the same spawning mechanics and the same mob cap and everything like that. So I'm just going to try and make sure that we only get squids and dolphins from this AFK spot right here. If we get anything else, then I'll know that we need to adjust the AFK spot accordingly. Now, of course, the squids and dolphins don't actually spawn that quickly. So I'm just going to stand up here for a while and stare into the deep blue waters. You know, the really nice thing about having quad beacons all over the place is that the resistance and regeneration basically means I can't die on magma blocks. <laughs> it's quite fantastic, actually. Even my armor isn't really taking any damage because that resistance 2 is just absolutely a lifesaver. Basically, resistance 2 is now my second favorite beacon effect because of course you can't have a better favorite than haste to you know that moment when you just got done building something and then you realize there's something completely terribly and utterly wrong with it yeah look at that it does not look even at all does it so that sea lantern is supposed to be directly in the center of that platform and um yeah, pretty sure it's not. <laughs> Although then again, hold on, it's not actually supposed to be perfectly in the center because this is supposed to be centered on the 2x2 two two center of a chunk and I did not mark out the 2x2 two two center. Okay, so maybe if I go mark out the 2x2 two two center, that'll actually fix the symmetry issues. 
I hope so. Otherwise, I gotta rebuild and expand like most of that. <laughs> I realize it's pretty hard to see in here because, well, you know, it's one block tall, and also I can't look at myself in the camera. No! Well, that's that's a bug. Anyway, so I marked out the central chunk. I now have the two by two in place. Each one of these torches right here is the corner of the chunk, and it should be eight blocks out in either direction from these torches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, it is actually built incorrectly. I gotta expand the entire thing one block. <laughs> one block to that side. Okay, well, rips. Let's hope it's only one block and uh only on one side one two three four five six seven so yeah we gotta expand it a block right there okay one two three four five six seven eight okay that's actually correct so that's a good thing let's go check this opposite side real quick as well make sure this is good one two three four five six seven eight Okay, good. So it looks like I only need to expand it by one block in that direction. I already checked that side, so I believe it's only one block. Ultimately, I am pretty surprised that it's only one block off. Knowing me, it should be at least seven or eight blocks off. And with this one swing of a pickaxe, that should be the entirety of the Guardian Farm flooded, but also all of the water sources in this entire thing should now be restored. So I believe that is the expansion complete. And yep, the entire thing is now expanded. It should all be perfectly symmetrical and full of water. Now, what exactly did I flood down here? Oh, oh my. <laughs> of course it landed directly on top of a guardian farm cell. Like, direct hit. Bullseye. Cool. So it completely flooded all that redstone away. Sweet! Now I get to remember how to build these things. Okay then, so that is officially another farm added to our farming area of bases. It doesn't even really make the bottom area all that dark, although we definitely need to have a little bit more torch spam. And honestly, it's kind of cool. Let's fly away a little bit and we'll get a better view of the actual farming area. Of course, we have yet to install item collection and we have yet to install any form of decoration, but... It kind of adds to it, you know? We're gonna have another giant farm above that one even. So the area is definitely coming along. Now you may have noticed this little thing throughout today's episode off in the distance in the corner of the screen sometimes and this is a brand new scale model. A couple of episodes ago we made this little 1 16th scale model for the funsies to kind of explain the plans of the base and now we've expanded that to a one-fourth scale model so every four by four of blocks is essentially one chunk of the farm and we've been doing some planning on some live streams we spent about three hours building this and planning out all the different details and just trying to figure out how we're going to decorate the main base so you can see there's a lot of circles there's a lot of spirals there's a lot of symmetry and this was kind of a group effort between like me and maybe like four or five hundred people throughout those couple live streams. <laughs> it has the approval of the masses. So let me know what you think about it. If you want to see more details of exactly what's going on here and the thought process behind this build, then the VODs from those live streams are of course on the second channel. And you can check those out if you feel like it. But basically that little square down there is the garden farm we're gonna have uh concentric circles conceding circles circles we're gonna have lots of circles going all the way around it and then we're gonna have some circles and some more circles and then we're gonna have some spirals connecting the iron farms to the squid farm going around and then we're gonna have some spirals going up the middle of the base to connect the guardian farm to the first afk platform and also up to the squid farm so basically just giant spirals going up to that thing and then we're gonna have some more spirals and more curvy bits and things and bobs and circly things going all the way up from the squid farm up to the afk platform of the squid farm and then eventually to the mob farm as well so that is kind of the idea overall it's gonna be a lot of work it's gonna be a lot of brain teasing spirals and circly square things 
and um, it's gonna take a very long time to build, but it should look absolutely amazing when it's completely done. Unfortunately, I did build a lot of the scale model out of glass, so it might look a little bit all over the place and kind of hard to see what's going on, but I think in the long term, it's gonna be a pretty amazing looking base. I'm gonna have to do a lot of brain thinking to figure out exactly how to build the spirals and how to build the curves and the shape and the general gradual curves of all those spirals and everything. It's gonna take a lot of brain power. It's not something that I've done before, but if done correctly and with enough help from you guys telling me if it looks bad, it will turn out amazingly. And I hope to have this done sometime within the next couple of months. We're going to install the main general hostile mob farm above this area. Area. And then once we have that mob farm installed, we're going to begin the decoration process of this entire build. We've also figured out that yes, we are actually going to put the storage and all of the other bits and bobs for this area underneath the ocean monument down here. Not within the ocean monument, actually down underneath it. That way we don't need to clear out the ocean monument of the water. This gives us about 32 or so blocks going downwards before we hit the bedrock. It should be plenty of area for a couple of slime farms, for a massive omega smelter, and of course for a lot of storage systems as well. So as we're working on the decoration, we can kind of pop back and forth between working on new technical projects, new farms, and also getting this area fully decorated as well. Overall, I have really, really high hopes for the long-term efforts of this area, and I think it's going to turn out beautiful. Something very, very helpful and just kind of shows the perfect symmetry of this area. The very tops of the iron farms is at Y129, and then the very bottom of this squid farm is also at Y129 as well, which actually plays in perfectly with my plan for those giant spirals that are going to connect the iron farms to the squid farm. Basically, the spirals are going to go from the side of the iron farm, probably from about right there or so, down to about the bottom of it. And that is going to go directly underneath the squid farm. And it's going to create this cool spiral pattern on the actual bottom side of this that will then connect into the actual spirals that connect this build to the lower guardian farm as well. There's going to be a lot of interconnecting circles and spirals, and it should actually turn out really well, assuming I can build it correctly. The final thing that we need to do for the squid and fish farm is, of course, install all the rail lines and the minecart unloaders, but all of that is pretty basic. It's basically going to be the same exact system that we built for the bamboo farms. I'm essentially going to use the same kind of minecart unloading system, and I just need to build about 32 of those at the very top of the base. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it very symmetrical. So instead of having 32 minecart unloaders on like the south side, for example, I'll have a 16 of them on this side. And then I'll have the other 16 on the north side as well. That way it's not unsymmetrical. It looks proper. And that gives us a slight chance of making it look good when we finally decorate this area. So that's a very, very easy task. By the time we have the next episode, Episode, we should be able to do a rate test of this farm and see exactly how much fish and ink sacs and bones and salmon we get from all of this and I hope that you have enjoyed this episode because it is now the outro time you guys know what to do leave a like on the video if you did enjoy this episode thank you ever so much for watching if you are new here then of course consider subscribing so you don't miss a future episodes on the channel of which there will be many we have so many projects to do and so many episodes to make. I hope that you're looking forward to all of those. I certainly am. Anyway, thank you again so very much for watching today's video. I'll see you down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.